everyone, welcome to another new episode of Help My People Show. Today with me, I have my old flatmate, Eric. Thank Hi. you for coming to my show. <laughs> <laughs> Germany yeah. gives the hand. Okay, so it's indeed a pleasure that you accepted my offer. You know that this project is all about helping the unemployed youth in Naglin or in yeah. India or in any parts of the world. And uh, we have this career episode going on and today we have a new career episode. So I'm from India and then our career journey is totally different. And you guys will get a new perspective of career journey as a German student. He's a student, music student. Yes. Yes. So how are you feeling today? Eric? I'm feeling uh, good today. Today. I'm a little bit excited about everything like this, but I'm also a little bit tired. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, so uh, without wasting any further time, maybe you could introduce yourself yes. to the audience. Uh, first, I'm uh, not technically only a music student. I'm mm -hmm. uh, studying to become um, teacher? A, a teacher uh, from 5 to 12th grade. The German education system is very difficult and uh, depends on county to county, but uh, I become sort of a high school uh, high school teacher, and uh, in Germany, teachers have to study and later teach at least two subjects. They can do more, but have to do at least two. Mm -hmm. And my two subjects are music mm -hmm. and maths. So I have to study sort of three things on how to become a teacher, like teaching stuff, how to explain stuff, maths and music, and that is more or less. A little bit like if I would study only maths and or only study music. Thank you for giving us a brief yeah. overview. Yes, and that's how what was I study. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how was growing up as a child in Germany here? I mean, like as a German. Student. Yeah, um, I'm from Eastern Germany, mm -hmm. and uh, Germany was uh, split into two countries until the 1990. Mm -hmm. And I'm from the eastern part, which was part of the socialist bloc. And things changed a lot. Um, and uh, the economy went down in the east uh, in the 90s and 2000s. Uh, I didn't get to know a lot of that when I was growing up as a child. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, privileged. I, had to, I, had, I could go to music lessons, I could dancing lessons, I could do a lot of stuff, which was really great. But uh, people always seem to talk about the past and not be very happy about what happened a little bit. But whatever, most people don't talk about uh, this past anymore, especially here in the West where things didn't change a lot. And yes, growing up as a child, um, the thing is, I don't, for me, that's how childhood for me is normal. Mm -hmm. What what do you think is different in, in a German childhood? I didn't have to work or anything. Mm -hmm. I just had hobbies and my uh, parents paid for everything. Mm -hmm. And when I was small, I went to, into the kindergarten and then I went into school. Okay. <laughs> so how was your teenage life? My teenage life? Yeah. Uh, very busy. I had a lot of hobbies. Yeah. What kind of hobbies did you have? I did uh, uh, ping pong table tennis. Okay. And I did uh, acting, drama stuff mm -hmm. from the school. I did also... Um, schools have uh, democratic systems. We elect um, like class leader and so on. And I um, was elected and went a few steps above that. Mm -hmm. And uh, was like the the number one student at the, the university uh, at the school, mm -hmm. and uh, also did music and I did dancing. I did uh, ballet and I did couple dancing, which I still do today. I give mm -hmm. dancing lessons here at the mm -hmm. university for friends mm -hmm. for free mm -hmm. because I can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. did also did uh, swimming, like lifeguard stuff. I did, did I did a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff. So these extracurricular activities, they were not from the university or somewhere from the university? Maybe you could explain it. Um, there are um, schools and universities often um, have these extracurricular activities you can do. Mm -hmm. um, if they're from the school, they are most of the time uh, free as education is generally here, at the, here in Germany. Schools and university doesn't cost anything. We as students have to pay. I think about 300 euros for on, on each semester, but that is for uh, services. For example, we can use public transport for free with that and uh, go to the um, theater for free and so on. Mm -hmm. So this is not going to the university. This money is going back to ourselves. 
Mm-hmm. That's the only fee we have to pay. And uh, these extracurricular activities are very popular in Germany and uh, people think it's good to do them. And there are sort of two extremes. Either you do nothing mm-hmm. and stay at home or do maybe one. And then there are people like me who do everything they can and then two more. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so like uh, your, um, now we will talk a little bit about your career journey. For okay. example, like you said, you mentioned in the beginning that you went to a kindergarten. So could you please over, uh, give a brief overview about the German system of education? And after that, you could uh, talk about your career because in India, we go to kindergarten, of course. Yeah. But then after that, we uh, study till 10th. And after that, we have 10 plus 2, then the bachelor's, then the master's. But I know in Germany, it's a little bit, you have a lot of options. Yeah, right? yeah. So and crazy. it's different in each part of Germany. <laughs> exactly. For example... Um, the grading system in school yeah. uh, is very different to how I grew up in Eastern Germany compared to here, how it is here and how I, as a teacher, learn how to do it now. Because uh, in, for example, maths, what is what on a certificate at the end was only what we did on in the math tests and so on, how we scored at these tests and this was our grade. Mm-hmm. And here it is... 50-50, 50% it is how you do on the tests and 50% is just how you behaved in the class and how um, how often you raised your hand and said, I, I know it, I know it. And uh, how the teacher more or less likes you in the end. Mm-hmm. And I'm still conflicted and don't know how, which system I prefer. I think it, it, it seems weird to, to me that half of your grade is not dependent on how you good you did in the test. That's still weird for me. And period. the German system is very difficult and splattered across. There are many ways to do stuff. For example, I think you can go into Kinderkrippe and Kindergarten studying when you are three years old or something. Mm-hmm. And um, also free. Uh, but you don't have to. A school is mandatory when you, you start going to school when you're about six years old. Then you have a primary school, which is from one to four, or in another county in Germany, it's one to six, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then you have to choose uh, three different kind of schools, more or less. There are more types, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, Hauptschule, Realschule and uh, Gymnasium, and which is more or less, uh, f- Hauptschule is from uh, fifth to ninth grade. And you do an uh, internship, you do a crafty a job after that. You learn how to do plumbing or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Mittelschule or Realschule is till 10th grade. You can do after that what you want. And there's a gymnasium, which is like a lyceum or something. And this is from 5 to 12th or 13th grade, depending on where you live. For example, I had to go until 12th. And people here have to go until 13th grade, whatever. And after that, you can study. You can go to the university. What is also possible is that you do, um, you learn a job Mm -hmm. and then you are qualified to study something for that job. So you can go to university in Germany, especially here in Kassel, if you don't have theoretically the academic level to go to university. That's also... um, sort of new system but I think that's a a good one Mm -hmm. and upon bachelor and master's thing in Germany um, we also still have um, we have the bachelor and master's system which is uh, sort of new then for many engineering jobs we still use the old system with um, diplom Mm -hmm. which is sort of um, the first diplom is above bachelor and second is like ab- about a master's degree and people in the industry still like um, these old, this old system because they are designed to educate them in, on such a level that it fits perfectly. For bachelor, they, are not, uh, they don't know enough mm-hmm. and masters, they are overqualified. So they still prefer the old system. Mm-hmm. And for certain jobs that you still will later work for the government like i will do as a teacher or if you will do it as a policeman or something mm-hmm. then you the state has its own system called staatsexam which is more or less also 
like bachelor and master's degree, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't have to do a bachelor's thingy. I just do straight my master's in, in the end. Okay, thank you for giving us a brief overview about the German system of education. Yes. And now I would like to, uh, could you please talk um, more about your career path? How did you choose, like as a child, you went to the kindergarten and you could maybe explain further so that people will get a brief overview that in order to become a teacher, you have to choose this kind of career paths. So it's like one step after the another. Yeah. yeah. Um, and should I also explain... Uh, how which other jobs i wanted to do no, you can yes you can okay yeah. uh, I, i didn't know what i really wanted to do like most people and people in germany generally think a lot about what they want to do and mm -hmm. take their time with it because they want to do it right it's having a job in germany is not only about earning money to survive you need to enjoy it and yeah you need to really enjoy important. it uh, work-life balance is a, is a huge <laughs> thing here <laughs> yeah. and Yes, they want to, uh, what also it becomes more and more important is that the job has meaning and a purpose. Because if you don't know why you're doing it, if it seems useless what you're doing, even though you earn a lot of money, it's frustrating and mm -hmm. people don't want that. And sadly, a, a lot of jobs are in their core useless we have here in Germany because we are so rich. Huh. And <laughs> yes... I always wanted to be the, the smart guy and I thought about becoming an architect or an engineer or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, the last thing I would want to do was going into IT, so mm -hmm. programming and stuff. But uh, then I realized I don't want to learn the newest programming language when I'm in my 50s. I want to settle down at this point and don't have to keep up with <laughs> the, work. The, the technology all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, so I realized okay i want to be the smart guy and i'm always explaining stuff to everybody if they want to or not anyway we have a german word for that klugscheißer <laughs> uh, okay i will not exp uh, and i will not translate it so you get your ad revenue <laughs> um and i uh, said i want to become a, a teacher that was around um 10th grade mm -hmm. so i had still two more years of school mm -hmm. and i didn't know which subjects i wanted to do mm -hmm. and then i saw, saw what was needed because we have a huge lack of teachers in germany mm -hmm. and uh, i saw what i was good at and um, therefore decided i want to do music and maths Uh, that is a quite an unusual career path for a music student because most of the time they want to become musicians mm -hmm. and they want to do a want to have a real job so because as a musician it's hard to get into the business and survive uh, that's because the, so, some are, many of them want to study music and then they say okay I become, I become, I become a music teacher mm -hmm. But for me, it was the other way around. I wanted to become a teacher. And then I said, okay, I'm good at music. I become a music teacher. For music, it's um, not important how your grades are. Mm -hmm. But it's more important on how your music skills are. That because, so because of that, we have a test at the beginning of our... Uh, Getting admitted? In the yeah, university? we have to get admitted mm -hmm. uh, to... It's an entrance exam and we have to, I have prepared myself for that in these two years and uh, I got I, I got in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so please tell us like uh, for example somebody wants to study uh, become a teacher in Germany. Yes. So please tell the career path. Um, you have to get the certificate. You have to get on the level that you are allowed to study. Mm -hmm. And how do we get that level? You have to uh, Pass school mm -hmm. and uh, at a certain level. For example, you have to you have to get Abitur as the German word for that. Mm -hmm. um, and if you are from a different country, you have to see if what you're doing is um, is at, is seen as equivalent in Germany. Mm -hmm. Or education, for example. Yeah, yeah, if your school education is seen in the German eyes as enough. Mm -hmm. If not, then you can take um, afternoon lessons and still get that kind of degree mm -hmm. and then you can get into teaching and to studying teaching and um, it, uh, it takes about depending on which school type of school you want to do for example if you want to teach only the little kids mm -hmm. um, it's I think about three years or four years and what I'm doing takes four to five 
because of music, because music is fun, a little bit more <laughs> years. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, if you want to become a teacher in Germany, you don't have to study it like I do, because we have such a huge lack of teachers. You can just more or less say, I want to become a teacher and start teaching right away. Okay. You earn less, but you could st uh, start teaching right away. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And you were, um, you also talked that you had a lot of hobbies. Yes. And not only that, but we will talk about your hobbies as well. But before that, like, um, you have worked a lot so far, part time, like a music teacher or teaching dance and stuff like this. So, yeah. uh, like, uh, with those um, experiences, like, what did you learn from those uh, jobs that you are teaching? Because, like, the skill that we get it, we always learn something new, right? Yeah. Um, the, I was uh, very privileged that because I don't have to work. Mm -hmm. I work right now a little bit. I take care of this room for the university. I am mm -hmm. um, giving math lessons and so on. Mm -hmm. But I always, I never needed to work for in order for the money. I'm very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. But I'm also very privileged for that. Mm -hmm. And because of that, most of the stuff that I did was teaching others, uh, other stuff and or for example here is taking care of stuff and i don't know what what the main lesson that i got from it is be be nice be nice to people mm -hmm. and uh whatever i don't know <laughs> it's okay i, I will cut it. <laughs> <laughs> i will cut it don't worry okay we will see yeah so like uh, you also said previously that okay <laughs> <laughs> you also said previously that uh, in germany people don't rush with their career and they really try to follow their patient but when i forgleichen when i compare this with india like indian parents they are normally like my daughter should be a doctor or an engineer like this so like like you said that we get frustrated at one point mm. earning money and stuff like that so could you please explain a little more about it like how how important it is to follow one's um, you know to follow what you really love to do because see this project is about the unemployed youth and mm. if we are following if we are choosing the path by our parents then sometimes we can also land up in another road mm. and this can also affect to the unemployment because if you are really enjoying what you are doing then like you said money will automatically come yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean struggle is always there nothing yeah. is easy in life nothing then, is easy yes yeah, so like could you like based on your personal experience because i know that you are enjoying that what you are doing yes. you're really enjoying the process so what are the benefits of you know following what you are doing and what are the in your opinion what are the disadvantage to follow what uh, you know somebody is telling you to do ah okay yeah. the um, the thing is for example my, my little sister is uh, in 10th grade right now mm -hmm. and she sort of has to decide now what she will want to do so she can prepare herself for that mm -hmm. and because of that, that's why we have this sort of discussion at home as well mm -hmm. because my mother is working for the financial department which is quite a boring job mm -hmm. but an easy job <laughs> and it's quiet um it's it's not stressful or anything it's a little bit boring but it gets good money you mm. can you don't have to work a lot it's if it, it's boring but otherwise it's a very good job mm -hmm. and my father uh, followed his passion about uh, nature and is doing nature uh, certificates and stuff mm -hmm. very broken down right now and um, he's always comes home stressed and he's his <laughs> own boss and so he has to do, do a lot of uh, office stuff and so on yeah. and uh, my sister is a little bit between these two worlds between the good but boring job and between the one you want to follow uh, and the one which is more uh, stressful yeah. by the way in, in normal interviews i think it's um, normally you give the questions you ask yeah i know i know but <laughs> think about everything yeah i know but uh, i will give you so much simple questions that you can even answer even while you are <laughs> asleep okay yeah, let's so see let's see me. what words i have to look up <laughs> So for English. You don't have to worry about it. Fetish? Yes. Okay. Also, uh, Pavilion is also open right now, so we can get a coffee. Oh. With coffee.